How many of you have been to the grocery store this week? All right. Now, how many of you were just as happy as this lady is when you left the grocery store? Well, by the end of this presentation, I guarantee that you will be. Now, imagine for a second you're at the grocery store picking up your usual items, some bread, some milk, some pasta, maybe some ice cream because you had a really rough day and all you want to do is go home, veg out, and watch Netflix. Now, imagine you're at the produce section and you look down and you realize you have nothing green. At this point, the only thing green you have is a two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew. So you go ahead and grab a bag of apples or something, right? And what do you see? Well, you probably see something that looks a lot like this, right? A lot of diversity, a lot of different plant foods for you to choose from. So imagine today that after all of these talks, you decide to go to the grocery store again, pick up your usual stuff, and instead of seeing all this diversity that you're used to seeing in the produce section, you see something much more bleak something that looks a lot like this. This is our world without bee pollinators. It is estimated that bees pollinate up to one third of the food that we eat. To put that into perspective, that's one in three bites of food is a product of bee pollination. This is the food that we need to maintain healthy, well-balanced diets that are exciting and interesting. Of course, it's not only humans that require bee pollinated foods. A diversity of wildlife require wild bees to pollinate their wild foods as well. Wildlife like bears and deer and monkeys, even some insects, require these bee-pollinated foods. However, to truly appreciate bees, outside of the context of them as pollinators, one must come first to learn and appreciate that there are some 20,000 described species of bees. These bees come in a variety of different colors, shapes, and sizes. Bees are vegetarian, and they visit flowers for both pollen and nectar, and along the way, happen to pollinate. The European honeybee is by far the most iconic bee pollinator, but it is just one type of bee, a mere drop in the bucket of our planet's bee biodiversity. Despite the importance of bees in sustaining our diets and ensuring that we don't die of scurvy, bees are declining across the planet. But I don't mean all 20,000, of course, but some of them seem, most of them seem to be doing just fine, but we do know that the European honeybee and several of our wild bumblebees are in decline. And that's what I will focus on for the rest of this talk, these wild, fuzzy bumblebees, because that's what I've been working on here at Utah State University. We now know that there are about 250 described species of bumblebee, 50 of which occur right here in North America. And after scouring multiple museum collections and going into the wild to search for these awesome bumblebees, I have found that they are in decline, right here in the western United States. I have found in my research that one species, Bombus occidentalis, has declined by nearly 90% in the western US. Why are these wild bumblebees disappearing? Well, to answer that question, we must first take a look at ourselves. Our human family has grown to well over 7 billion people within this past century alone. We have cleared away wild spaces to make ways for cities and suburbs to house those people. We have burned copious amounts of fossil fuels to ignite our cities, thereby releasing greenhouse gases into our atmosphere and changing our climate. We have made way for monocultures in prairies that where wild bees used to roam. And many of these monocultures are not suitable for bees. And when they are, we spray them with chemicals, which have been found to be very toxic. We have also trucked our bees across the continent and have flown them across oceans to meet our growing pollination demands, thereby spreading bee diseases. All of these different activities have been found to negatively affect our wild bumblebee pollinators. Now these seem like huge problems, right? Problems that you and I cannot fix in a single day. But there are things that we can do as communities to encourage our wild bumblebees to thrive. And it all starts with simply planting wildflowers that are native to your neighborhoods. If you have to use pesticides in your gardens, do so responsibly and don't spray flowers when they're in bloom and when bees are most likely to visit them. You can also create habitat for bees by maybe building a bee hotel or simply laying some bare ground out for bees to find and nest in instead of putting grass or cement. Here at Utah State University, I've invested a part of my graduate career to encourage and foster curiosity in our wild bumblebee pollinators with the residents of Cache Valley. And I feel that by promoting our wild bumblebees, we can ensure that they remain a part of our future and a part of the ever more important pollination equation. Thank you.